I'm Gordon Foister, um, company is Tagle Systems. Just to motivate some of my talk, here's a picture of not, not the most recent floods, but sometime in the past, of a couple of tractors stranded in flood water on my farm. Um, the, the question arises, why did the tractors end up there in the flood waters? Why didn't I move them? And the answer is because I didn't know what was ha happening up in the hills. So the rain gauge on my property wasn't telling me what was happening up in the, in, the, in the back of the property. And this is a very typical scenario. We need to know what's happening at a smaller scale. And to motivate that, there's been some studies done in the, in the far past about the variations of rainfall. Um, you can see there over a 11 uh, square kilometre area, 34% variation under 10 millilitres of rain. Over one square kilometre, you get just 10% 10, 10 variation. And that kind of variation, knowing about that variation of the rainfall over the, over the country, is extremely important for efficient agriculture. And you see that that work was published in 1969, which is about the last time that you could afford research students to go out and collect, um, collect rain from 18 gauges in real time. So that work hasn't been done since then until Tagle's come along. So what Tagle does is works with the water cycle. We're interested in modelling all of the water at a very fine scale. And in, a, in your model, you're going to monitor slow changes to the river systems and to the aquifers and to the evapotranspiration. But you're going to measure in real time where the water's coming from and where the water goes to. And you're going to apply that to a model so that you can manage the water. And this is all about improving efficiency. To motivate, uh, to, to justify that you can model on a, on a fine scale, all the water that would fall, say, on Australia. Um, my past training was in electronic systems. Um, a typical integrated circuit from someone like Intel, the, the latest generation of processors, has over a billion transistors. They're modelled very accurately. So, so modelling uh, uh, 7 million square kilometres of Australia isn't as big a, a challenging problem as modelling um, all the, integrated, all the transistors in a large integrated circuit the size of your, your little, little thumbnail. Um, and, and the reason that that's not done is because there's no, no economic incentive to model the water systems in Australia. There's no organisation like Intel spends $100 million on modelling an integrated circuit. There's no one in Australia that's got $100 million to model all of the water that falls in Australia. And to say a little bit about the, um, to, to tell you about a bit about where we've come from, um, this company I started back in 2007, initially to uh, track cattle, because I'm a, I'm a cattle farmer and I've also got training in electronics design. So this picture is taken from a, a, a cattle farm up in North Queensland. I think Hugh Bradlow from Telstra was up there the day we took this photo. Back in 2009, we successfully developed a cattle, cattle tracking device that weighs 20 grams. It can track cattle over 10 kilometres. The battery in that device lasts for two to three years, depending on how frequently you want to, to locate the cow. Um, and we started to roll that out. We had hundreds of customers. Unfortunately, they only wanted to buy 20 parts each, and we're selling those things for $10 a year. So the total income was under $100,000 and the total expenditure was over 10 million, it just didn't add up. So we're never going to make our money back from this particular space. So what we did, we pivoted into, a new te into using the, the technical capability of that device in a new space, where we're producing devices for under, much less than $100, with a battery life of a, with a AA cell that can last for more than 10 years, transmitting small amounts of data over very long ranges. And here on this graph, you can see the, 
the range we're talking about up to um, hundreds of square kilometres for many years, up to 10 years with a double A cell. Um, and it's what we found is that this is a new technology space that hadn't been addressed by any of the machine to machine technologies in the past. So we, tr we started commercialising this to different industries in about 2010. Um, the, the first industry that we approached was the water industry. Oh, sorry. The way, the way it works is, is just like a telco, those devices are in the field, um, different devices using that radio technology, picked up by um, towers similar to cell phone towers. We send the data to a cloud server and send the data back then to a customer. So we, we process the data and store it for them and send it back to whoever's bought the, the particular radio device. So we operate just like, just like a telco. We're the largest um, machine to machine Internet of Things company in Australia at the moment. We have about 100,000 uh, devices like this in the field around Australia. Uh, we have fairly small revenue because we're talking about just a few dollars uh, a year to supply the data from these sensors to, back to the clients. So we, we're just a small company, only 15 people, based here in Sydney, but supporting uh, around about 100,000 square kilometres of coverage around Australia. So this is the most important slide in my presentation. Um, it looks pretty boring, but, but what we've distilled the essence of our technology down to delivering the lowest possible cost for delivering small amounts of data. Um, and, and it's all dominated by the power supply. Um, a lot of people think that because it's, it's technology, it's going to always get cheaper. The fact is that battery technology hasn't actually um, advanced as quickly as, as other electronic technology. So the car battery that you buy now is pretty much the same price as it was 30 years ago. And that's because the, the cost of batteries is dominated by commodities lithium and, and lead. So, so the cost of batteries haven't changed that much and it's slowly going down, just about keeping up with inflation. So the, the dollar price you pay stays pretty much the same for the last 30 years. Um, so that's why the, our technology, the, the device cost that we're deli delivering f for the remote sensors is dominated by the power supply. Um, but we are able to achieve that 10 years battery life with a AA battery. One of the other things that we're doing is we only do one-way systems. To, to supply a two-way system would, would uh, cost approximately five times as much. So we, we send small amounts of data from the field back to the, the cell phone, the, the cell towers. Um, they're not cell phone, they're just cell towers. And we do it very reliably because we're monitoring fixed assets such as water meters. And if there's any, and we know when they haven't sent their, their data through because we're monitoring all that network in real time, so we're able to send um, technicians out to fix any any devices that aren't sending data to the back to the uh, the um, cloud server. So we're we're doing this um, to about 30 utilities spread around Australia at the moment, with hundreds of th with around 100,000 devices in the field and we're supplying data with KPIs on the data. So there's, there's, uh, they're paying a subscription for the data. Um, we can monitor rain gauges, and this is the, the, one of the, the main devices. We'd, we'd, we'd like to have a lot more of them spread around, and water meters. So we've got about 80,000 of those around Australia. It's a radio device connected to a standard domestic water meter we can supply that for well under $100. So what can you do with this kind of network? To cover 100% of Australia, knowing where every litre of water that falls on the country and every litre of water that gets used by irrigators, by um, domestic consumers and goes into the aquifers would cost a fairly big number two billion dollars but this is an order of magnitude at least cheaper than what it would have been able to do with any other technology 
So they're pretty interesting, num big numbers, and not that interesting because most people, uh, the, most of Australia d either have too much water or too little. So where does it make a, where is it important to monitor the water? And it's the Murray-Darling Basin. So you could monitor all of the rainfall, every square kilometre of rainfall in the Murray-Darling Basin, and every irrigation offtake and every urban utility offtake out of the Murray-Darling Basin for $300 million. You could do full environment management. You'd be looking at controlling, exactly controlling all of the water that flows down the Murray-Darling Basin. You'd be hugely efficient in the productivity increase through informed water trading because you'd be applying the water to the most the, 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 the largest benefit, the most, um, the most economic return. We've seen, as we have saw on the previous slides, about the water use efficiencies, you know, pe people saying that only a fraction of the water gets used efficiently, but with this kind of system, and not that much in the scheme of things, um, less than 2% of the total agricultural production of the, of the Murray-Darling Basin, you know, you'd be able to supply that and, and manage it for for about 10% of that per annum. And to come full circle, this is a, a picture of flood damage. If you wanted to monitor all the, the recent damage we saw from the, the East Coast low, if you wanted to monitor all of the, uh, the, the rainfall on the east of the Great Dividing Range, uh, around $100 million to do that. So this is uh, coming full circle in my talk, and uh, that completes it for me. Thank you.